Hey guys, welcome to the second video in this problem set. So this one is going to be all about formal charge. So if you saw the last video, you would have seen uh, like these things, like these little plus charges and these minus charges, right? So that's what's known as formal charge. So I'm going to show you what that is and how to calculate that uh, in this video. All right. So I drew a little uh, problem over here for you guys. So it has a carbon bound to two R groups and uh, of a double bonded to an oxygen. Now, just so you know, R groups can really be anything, right? It could be another carbon, uh, hydrogen, anything. In this case, it doesn't matter. That's why I drew, it. I drew it as R. It has no effect on what we're doing. So the basic equation for a formal charge is the valence electrons of the atom, which you can figure out just by looking at the periodic table, minus uh, the number of bonds it has, plus the electrons in the lone pairs. So we're just going to run through this example over here, starting with the oxygen. So if you look at the periodic table, you'd see that oxygen has six valence electrons, right? And so now we got to figure out the number of bonds. So this oxygen has two bonds, okay? And so it has those two bonds to the carbon, so we just write in two. Plus the individual electrons in its lone pairs. So this has two lone pairs over here. Uh, and so that's a total of four electrons. So you put four, right? And what you get is six minus six, and that's just going to be zero. Now, when it's a formal charge of zero, that means that that atom is neutral. And so we don't write a plus charge or a minus charge. We just leave it as is. So let's look at the carbon. This carbon has how many bonds? Oh, sorry, how many valence electrons does carbon have. If you look at the periodic table, you see that carbon has four valence electrons. And so the amount of bonds it has is two to this oxygen, one to this R group, one to that R group. So that's a total of four. And now how many lone pairs does it have? This carbon doesn't actually have any lone pairs, right? And so we can just uh, write in a zero. Sorry, zero. And then when you go through that, you're just going to get another zero. All right, and so that means that carbon is also neutral. Now, before I go any further in formal charge, I'm just going to introduce something about carbons and the way that they're drawn out. Now, when you in the beginning of orgo, you'll see that carbons, uh, carbon chains are drawn like this, okay, or maybe even like this. So the thing about carbons is it likes to have four bonds, okay, and it gets very tedious when you're drawing out really large structures to keep drawing in all the hydrogens and stuff. So what uh, most people, the way people write long carbon change, chains is going to be like this. And so what that represents is every little point in here, like you see there are four points, or is a carbon atom. And because, so because carbon has four, likes to have four bonds, if we do not show that anything else is bound to a carbon, we assume that those four bonds are going to be hydrogens. So if you look at this carbon over here, we see that it has one bond to another carbon. And so since we didn't draw it bound to anything else, we assume that uh, the remaining three bonds are going to be hydrogens. So we can just draw in one hydrogen, two hydrogen, three hydrogen. Now if you look at this carbon, it has one bond to that carbon, a second bond here, so that's two out of the four. And since we didn't draw in any other atoms bound to that carbon, we assumed that there are two hydrogens. And so if I looked at this one, if I had drawn in, let's say, uh, a hydroxide group, or hydroxyl group, right, that's going to have one bond here, second bond there, a third bond to that oxygen, and so that's three out of the four, and so the remaining one is a hydrogen, all right? So in the beginning when you're doing orgo, you could write it th um, this method, or you can write it this one, uh, but then when you get to later problems in the semester and in orgo two, it's going to become more and more difficult to draw out those hydrogens just because of the time constraints, so I would recommend getting used to drawing them in the little chain form like this. All right, so let's go on to the, another example. So here we have this structure over here, and we're going to look at the formal charge of this oxygen, okay? So 
let's draw it out. So let's write it out the formal charge. And so the first thing is to find out the amount of valence electrons oxygen has. And if you look at the periodic table, it's going to be 6. Now let's figure out the amount of bonds it has. This oxygen has one bond to a carbon there, a second bond to a carbon over there. So that's going to be 2 plus the amount of electrons in its lone pairs. That's 4. So you write out 4. And that, so when, when you do that, you're going to get 0. All right, so it's very similar to what we had before. But let's change it up this time. We're going to look at this carbon over here. Okay? Now, if you remember for what I said before, uh, when we draw carbon chains, if nothing is shown drawn to them, we assume that uh, the bonds are going to be hydrogen. So in this case, this carbon is bound to one other carbon here and a second one there. So it's two out of the four. So we assume it has two other hydrogens. Okay. Now, if you now this is going that was very similar to what the previous problem was. And so if you remember, carbon with four bonds and no lone pairs is going to have a formal charge of zero. Okay. So let me change it now. Imagine if we took this hydrogen and deprotonated it, right? Very similar to a reaction we saw the last time, in which something is going to grab that hydrogen and rip it off, and the lone pairs are going to go onto the carbon, right? Remember, a bond has exactly two electrons, and so two electrons are now going onto that carbon. So let's redraw it. That hydrogen is gone. And we now have a lone pair on that carbon. So let me actually just redraw it, only looking, focusing on that one carbon, just so you guys can see it easier. So we sub that hydrogen. And now we have a lone pair. So let's calculate the formal charge. So hydrogen, uh, oxygen, oh my god, carbon's valence electrons are going to be 4. And so the amount of bonds it has, so it's got one here, second one, and a third one, so that's three, plus the amount of lone pairs it has, the electrons in the lone pairs. And so it's got one, two. So we draw two. So when you add that, it's going to be negative one, right? And so that means this carbon has a formal charge of negative one. And trust me, you'll be seeing a lot of this specific structure in Orgo 2. It's a really big topic. All right, and so that's a formal charge of negative 1. Let me give you a quick example of a positive formal charge. Uh, if we look at the example we had in the last video, right, we had uh, this hydronium cation, right? And so it does have a plus charge, if you remember, but I'm going to show you why. So oxygen's... Valence electrons are 6, and it has 3 bonds, 1 to this hydrogen, All right, so 3 hydrogens, and so we can write 3, and it has 2 electrons in its lone pairs, right, right here, so that's going to be 2, and when you do that, you're going to have plus 1 as your answer, so that's why that oxygen has a formal charge of plus 1, All right, and so... That's the basics of formal charge. I would get comfortable with it. Um, when you get further into orgo, you won't have to be using this formula. You'll know just by looking at the atom what its formal charge is, but there will be definitely a question on the first exam about calculating formal charge. So make sure you guys practice it. And I'll see you in the next video.